Samplitude Pro X3, Spectral Layers Pro and SoundForge Pro integration. Although Samplitude has its own excellent wave editor, it's also possible for Samplitude to communicate bi-directionally with SoundForge Pro and Spectral Layers Pro. They, of course, can be used as standalone editors in their own right, but it's also possible to create a link from within Samplitude so you can send the audio back and forth from either of these editors. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up Samplitude so you can edit your audio using SoundForge Pro and Spectral Layers Pro. Before I show you how to link the two programs, there are some important settings we need to check. These will determine how the edited WAV files will be saved. I'm going to press Y and go into the Effects section and select Destructive Effect Calculation. At the top it says Destructive Effect Calculation in VIP Objects. File handling for effect calculation if Create Copy is active. These settings will become apparent later on in the tutorial. If you click on the list, there are three options. I'm choosing Generate New FX File for each effect. This will ensure that whenever I edit in SoundForge or Spectral Layers, a copy of the original audio will be created, therefore leaving the original audio untouched. You can also choose to enable Extended Name for the effect file. Plus, you can choose the file resolution below. I'm choosing 32-bit. So now we need to navigate to a window called External Tools. I'm going to the File menu here and down to Program Preferences, External Tools. So this is where we add the link for SoundForge and Spectral Layers. If you click on the small downward arrow, there are two predefined settings for SoundForge Pro and Spectral Layers. So I'm adding both of them. So now they've both been added to the external tools menu. At the bottom left, there is a setting called Create Copy, which needs to be ticked. This ties in with what I mentioned earlier in the tutorial about Samplitude generating a new file for each effect. This means the original audio won't be overwritten. There's also another tick box labelled Convert Before Transfer to WAVE. So if you're working with a different file format like MP3 or FLAC, the audio will be converted to WAVE before editing. That's everything configured, so I'm clicking OK to exit the External Tools window. I'm selecting the object and right clicking and you can see that SoundForge and Spectral Layers have been added to the menu at the bottom. I'm choosing Edit in SoundForge Pro 11. So there it is transferred to SoundForge and I can audition the audio within SoundForge. You can see that the object name has now been changed to Base FX Effect with the date and time of creation. If I look in the project folder, you can see the original base file and the newly created Base FX file. This means we are working on a copy and the original won't be overwritten. So now I'm going to do a quick edit. I'm selecting a section and I'm going to reverse that piece of audio. Now I'm going to close the editor and there's a prompt asking me if I want to save the changes. I'm clicking yes. So now the edit has been transferred to Samplitude. So if you want to revert to the original audio, double click to open the object editor. Click on the Fade tab and you can see the audio is named Base FX. Click on the file browser and browse to the original file. There's a prompt asking me if I want to change the file reference, so I'm doing that. So we have the original audio restored. So now I'm going to send the audio to the Spectral Layers editor. I'm right clicking on the audio object and selecting Spectral Layers. 
So the audio has been transferred and I can audition it in spectral layers. So I'm going to do a quick random edit here just to show how it works. I'm going to generate silence for that selection. That selection has been silenced and I can audition it. I want to transfer the edit back to Samplitude, so I'm closing the editor by clicking at the top. And there's a message asking if I want to transfer it back to Samplitude, which I do. This prompt is asking if I want to save it as a spectral layers project, which I don't. This might be useful if I'm using the standalone version, but I'm not in this case, so it's not necessary. So the edit's been transferred to Samplitude. And you can see the object name has been updated to base effects. This will be a new copy of the original audio. Once again, if I want to revert to the original audio, just open it from the object editor and load the original audio file. Choose change to change the reference and we're back to the original. One thing worth noting is if the base effects label isn't showing on the object, you need to make sure you have a particular setting in Samplitude enabled. Press Y and go to the View Options. Then make sure you have File Name enabled. If I untick this and click OK, you'll notice the file name has disappeared. So in order to make that visible, you need to have File Name ticked. Although it's possible this may be enabled already on your setup. So that's how you set up Samplitude Pro X3 to work with SoundForge and Spectral Layers Pro. So until next time, all the best.